parts of the soul, the functions of the soul that, that come, that we inherit, that uh, are developed in the womb on the left side there, and uh, the, the, then the functions on the right side of, of the chart that we learn uh, from, from the day of birth on. We start to pick up. We start to remember things. Uh, we develop a vocabulary. Vocabulary is necessary for us to put it into categorical storage so that when we talk about a horse, we go to, we know vocabulary horse, we go to that, and then we start picturing a horse and the different types of horses, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, maybe uh, events that we've had with a horse or we sent a ho saw a horse show or you know, all these things uh, are, are categories. Uh, and, of course, uh, we want to talk about uh, related to Bible doctrine uh, uh, as we get into, in, into our discussion here. Uh, as we develop that categorical storage, it's a frame of reference for us to go pull from. We develop a sense of what is right and wrong, norms and standards for life. And then as all this, starts, all this information starts to meld together, uh, it develops into what we call wisdom. In other words, it is at now, this knowledge is now applicable. So from uh, life, it's applicable to life. Uh, we've got a subconscious, a lot of junk goes into that, a different subject, uh, not time for that, uh, this discussion. Sin nature, we, it comes with a body, uh, it's not part of the soul. Well, our soul, everything, everything that's in our soul, when we die, it's going to go with us. Everything in our soul is going to go with us. Sin nature won't go with us. It stays with the body. So it's not part of the soul, but I put it there at the bottom because it affects both sides of the soul. I slant it to the left-hand side because it comes at birth along with the body. But it definitely affects the right side as well. Human spirit is activated at the moment of salvation. We are not born with it. It is not part of the human soul, but it is a permanent, once it is activated, because we have eternal life, uh, eternal security, it is a part of our uh, being forever. So our being consists of our soul in human spirit. <clears throat> Putting it all into operation, this is Ron's um, faith cycle, as he calls it. Bible doctrine taught. Holy Spirit brings it through the human spirit where it is made understandable. Without a human spirit, the natural man cannot understand uh, spiritual things. It goes into the memory center. We act on that doctrine that is understood. We act on it in faith to believe it, and then it is put into our norms and standards, our conscience, and our wisdom center. From there, it is available for the Holy Spirit to pull it out and help us, show us how to apply it to life. And again, we act on it with our volition. I emphasize volition. If you don't get anything else out of this, this discussion here, concentrate on volition there on the left-hand side because it is so key. Our volition chooses to believe. What do we believe for salvation? We believe Jesus Christ is our Savior, our volition is required to make that choice. We make a volitional decision. For learning Bible doctrine, after the point of salvation, we make a volitional decision all the way through that cycle. There were three points there that I pointed out that we make that decision. And then we trust the Holy Spirit. We make a volitional decision to trust the Holy Spirit. Who do we trust for salvation? It's a person. Christ. Who do we trust for empowerment after salvation? Holy Spirit. Why is our faith, why can we not consider our faith as much directed towards the Holy Spirit on a, on a conscious decision day by day as back at the point of salvation we're, we're very aware of our faith being directed toward Christ. I, use, I show several analogies that the Bible uses, uh, Paul, primarily Paul and other writers a little bit, uh, used to describe the soul and its function. 
But my favorite, I guess that's the engineer in me, uh, looks at the uh, spiritual house or the structure. Uh, and, and Bob Thiem used to teach it as uh, a structure that's being built up. He called it edification complex of the soul. Fancy term, but it's, it's, it's just he, he showed a number of floors and levels to build up that structure. Uh, so the two primary scriptures are in Ephesians. You see uh, it talks about your God's household being built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets and then being fitted into a holy temple in the Lord. You're being built up together to a dwelling of God in the spirit. And then the passage in Ephesians that we often we used to quote uh, as referring to spiritual gifts, uh, that, that uh, these communication gifts are to build up the body of Christ. Now, a, a, uh, as an engineer, a good engineer knows that any structure is no stronger than its foundation. And we, we see a couple of verses there that uh, re reference Jesus Christ as our foundation. Now, when I say foundation, I'm, I'm all ears because I deal with crack foundation or foundation problems, crack buildings because of foundation issues. And a believer who does not believe in eternal security, does not believe that he is saved no matter what, has foundation problems. And the whole structure is going to have cracks all in it all through his life because of that failure to believe. So that's why I hammer so hard on this issue of grace, salvation, and it being a permanent, permanent possession. When he says Jesus Christ is our foundation, it's talking about our salvation, our faith in Christ as being our foundation, and it's got to stick. The next floor, and I adopted these from, uh, from, from Bob's uh, themes, uh, teachings uh, from many years ago. I uh, made, made some uh, variations here, uh, as you might be aware if you studied him. Uh, but uh, one, one, the, the first thing, the first attitude that we must have is that of humility, realization of who God is and his sovereignty in his uh, infinity, in his perfection. We can't be that way. We can't be God. We can't be perfect. We can't be infinite. And the only way we're going to have a relationship with him is through allowing him to do the work. That is the definition of grace. Uh, so that is the very, that floor is the very start of the Christian way of life, from even including salvation, but in, in, then after that point. Uh, filling the Holy Spirit is very basic. It, it, he, is, he is our empowerment. He is our empowerment. Our faith, as I said before, is directed, must be directed towards him to do that work. Uh, we talk uh, in here about putting off the old man. Well, an unbeliever can put off the old man. That's, a psychologist can tell an unbeliever, just make a decision and make a, make, decide to change and, and, and not, not uh, to, 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 to your, your past norm and standards, whatever it was, don't do it anymore. We are under grace. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives us this empowerment. He is the one that must do it. Our faith must be towards him to put off the old man. Huge principle. We must put off the old man, but we do it through our trust in the Holy Spirit's power to do it. Knowledge of God's word, very uh, key con or basic concept for those of us in this church. That's why we go to this church and not some other church that uh, feeds you pablum. We want to know God's word, and as we saw with the human soul, everything on the right side of the human soul and we fill it up with God's word, it is our choice what goes in the right side. We don't have a choice about our parents and what we learn from our parents. Our parents teach us, taught us about God, or they didn't teach us about God, or they taught us there was no God. So we don't. We, we, a lot of things we learn from the time that we're uh, babies on up that are not our choice. 
But as we get older, what goes into that right side of that soul, that learned side of the soul, is our decision. It's our volition, what goes in there. And that's why we are sitting here ready to learn Bible doctrine and make a volitional decision to do so, to show up, to listen, to hear, and to, uh, and to believe that word and then to apply it to life. Faith rest is what I call the next floor, the next uh, uh, category or function of the human soul or the Christian soul in operation. And all these are going towards maturity. These are not in order. All these things function from day one to some degree. But as we go up in the floors, each, each upper floor functions more and more in relation, uh, and become more important at the more mature we become. <clears throat> Faith rest is an absolute rest, a decision. It, again, it's a volitional decision. I'm going to trust God to solve this problem. And on my last trip, when my, uh, my, my bag disappeared on the plane, and somebody had taken my, my bag with all, almost all my money and all my clothes and my, my medicine and everything, uh, I'd made a decision. Father, I'm going to trust you through this. And it took about two minutes to, for the person to own up and say, here it is. But, you know, you, you got to throw, and, and, and at this time like that, you got to throw one of the, one of the Hebrew, seven Hebrew words for, for faith is body slam. I'm going to throw myself on, on you in faith. And I, I certainly uh, saw, uh, sensed the function of that, uh, of that word, that Hebrew word, uh, in, in a situation like that. <clears throat> we certainly get testing. God gives us all testing. Tests get harder uh, as we go along. We still get the small test, but every once in a while, God will throw in a harder and a harder and harder test. And tests are necessary for you to, to make progress. You go through school from grade 1 to grade 12 and on, and on through college or whatever. Tests get harder. If you didn't ever get anything more than, than uh, addition and subtraction, you never would learn algebra and, and uh, trigonometry and calculus. You grow because you're tested. Testing challenges you to learn. It challenges you to apply. And as you apply, you gain confidence that you can take on harder tests. Prayer, as I said, prayer should be, a, should be a function from day one. But as we grow and gain maturity, that prayer becomes more and more effective because we learn that God answers the prayer. Does he answer every prayer? Does he promise to answer every prayer? Every prayer that's in accordance with his will. And the mature believer learns how to word things so they are in accordance with his will and desire things in accordance with his will. Bob talked a lot about impersonal love towards man and personal love towards God. Ron has been teaching us about that for several weeks here in James, and he emphasized it this morning. What are the two greatest commandments, Jesus said? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Impersonal love is based on the character of the one loving and not at all on the character or the, uh, how, how well the uh, uh, object of that love deserves it. Personal love is an interaction between friends, share things in common. We certainly have imper should have impersonal love for God, but as we learn more about God, we are aiming towards becoming friends of God and friendship involves personal love personal interaction an understanding of him knowing that he understands and loves us and considers us part of his family Abraham was called a friend of God that's where we're headed towards that's where we should be headed towards and certainly hope to head towards and then I put the cap, the roof every building has to have a roof and uh, this, this is the goal. As I said, all, all of these functions of the soul, of, of our lives, of this building that's being built up in our, uh, uh, in our soul, 
is headed toward a goal, and that goal is that of maturity. Along with maturity comes maximum happiness, and as uh, Revelation, the, 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 the seven churches in Asia, uh, each one of them had a, an admonition that he who overcomes, remember that? He who overcomes will, and then there, there's a reward associated, an eternal uh, heavenly reward associated with it, which I teach in, the, uh, in, in my last lesson on rewards in heaven. Um, and that's what I call the winner status. We are aim, aiming to be winners, to be overcomers, to wear a resurrection body with tremendous decorations on it and with direct decorations come responsibilities in heaven. The life is going to be an exciting time for those, of, uh, th those believers who have gained maturity, who have earned rewards, and uh, uh, there's no, going to be no equality in heaven. But it's going to be more exciting the more rewards we have, the more responsibilities we have uh, to uh, be able to carry out... Uh, Func uh, heavenly functions, and there will be a lot of purpose, a lot of a uh, 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 function that God has for us up there. So anyway, I just thought I'd share. Uh, I'm a visual kind of guy. I like uh, I, I learn a, 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 you know better sometimes with, uh, with with diagrams and things. And I can th these two diagrams in particular, I can picture uh, and often use them to picture in my head uh, as. as I meet challenges in life uh, going through on a day-to-day -day basis. It helps me to keep up with where I am. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, keep in prayer that everything will go, all the plans and everything will go well uh, for this next trip uh, to include my help. Thanks. You want me to pray? Or you want to... Okay. Father, I thank you for giving each one of us a spiritual gift for you letting us see in this church especially how valuable those gifts are and their function to each other uh, to make a healthy and full body for the Lord, uh, for the Lord's mission. Uh, thank you for our pastor, for the faithfulness that he's had over all these year, decades in, in teaching us. Thank you for giving us through this process to, all by grace, uh, an, an understanding of your word that, uh, that helps us to use your strength, to use your empowerment of the Holy Spirit and Bible doctrine in our souls, and to uh, make good decisions in life that will aim towards a winner status in, in eternity. I ask you to go with us, guide us as we seek the right place for us to, to be, whether it's here, there, or in heaven. Salute you as a source of all grace in Christ's name. Amen.